Good morning, all of you. Shubham and Yali. Our topic was yesterday's uh, concept of magnetic force on charged particle and magnetic force on current carrying conductor. Expression for magnitude and also most important thing, the right left hand convention, Fleming's left hand rule for the direction. Right. So let us see examples based on those today. The first example I am showing you. It's not without any numericals, no numericals, let us use a conceptual thing here. Now, the given figure, two tracks are given, track 1, it is said to be uniform magnetic field. Now, two tracks are shown, track 1 and track 2. Now, the question is that, a proton beam and electron beam are projected into same magnetic field, normal to the magnetic field. So, both of them are projected at right angles to the magnetic field. Which of the track represents that of the proton and uh, that of the electron is the question. Now here we will use our Fleming's left hand rule to find the direction. Now whenever I have told you Fleming's left hand rule, don't initially you know, stretch all your fingers and then you, you do some confusion. You do it in the stepwise process. First, magnetic field, the index finger. Then you use your center finger for current. And what is the meaning of current? Current is the direction in which positive charge such as proton, alpha particle, these particle moves, right? And then finally we will release the thumb that shows the direction of force. Now let us see how we are using this step process. Now step one, index finger, field. Field is going to be inverse. So my finger is inverse. Remember please, this is a board on the vertical plane in the examination. You will do it in the horizontal plane. Use your right hand along with your teacher. It is easy, very easy scoring. Now this one is inwards. This one is inwards. Supposing the tracks are given. See, electron and proton projected from your left to right. Supposing I keep from left to right. That will be the direction. Supposing this is the magnetic field. See, no thumb is released. Now I release the thumb from your left to right. Yes, it got. Now I release the thumb and thumb is upwards. Thumb is upwards. Supposing if this is what is the current direction, then it should be the upward trajectory force. Now this one, track 2, represents proton. Track 2 represents proton. Why? Because you see, the left to right proton, therefore current is also from left to right and the, the thumb is upwards. So, Second track represents proton beam and hence first beam represents the electron beam. Such is the answer. Now, if, you, if we find this one bit difficult, let us use our right hand convention I have told you. In which all these four fingers represents magnetic field. This is the direction of current and normal to the palm represents, normal to the palm represents the magnetic force. This one is a bit easier. You see here, again, field is inwards. All my four fingers I have placed into. And now, the trajectory. Now I release my thumb, which is the magnetic force. When I release the thumb, now this is downwards. Normal is downwards. Now look at this thumb. Thumb is from your right to left. Since this beam is given from left to right, right to left will be for the negative charges. See, this is what is electron, track 1 we said for electron, electron from left to right, but we have to take the direction in the other way. Therefore, it is downwards. Even if we use this one also, this track 1 representing the electron and the track 2 is representing the proton. Supposing the same example with a difference. What is the difference? See, supposing I have shown two tracks. This is track 1 and uh, this is track 2. Track 1 and track 2. What is the difference there? The difference we find in the degree of curvature. Right? The difference of degree of curvature. What is that? For track 1, curvature, degree of curvature is lesser and for track 2, the degree of curvature is more. Now again in the same example, 1 and 2 tracks are given and they are said to be like 
one is proton beam the other one is alpha beam this time both are light charges now we have to find which of the beam represents that of the proton or that of alpha particle is the question now earlier it was easier because the direction of trajectory was different for positive and negative charges now here in this case how do we do that for that you use the expression for the radius last class we have told radius r is equal to mv by bq r is equal to mv by bq supposing it is said that both are trajectory both are projected with same velocity in same field at right angles then this result will show you that r proportional to m by q r proportional to m by q is the result that is there but remember when such examples are given he will mention whether they are projected with same velocity or same momentum or same kinetic energy so that will be the key for us here since it is said that same velocity now i have used this expression for given velocity r proportional to m by q r proportional to m by q we will use here now for proton for proton yes let if we consider mass of the proton as a, mass of the proton as a m and charge as e then for alpha particle this is for proton for alpha particle yes mass is four times that of proton and charge is two times so this is what is two times m by e you are getting so proton if that m by q is uh, taken as one unit this is coming as uh, two units so what does it mean see radius is more for proton so alpha particle and radius is lesser for proton right so this example so that r alpha greater than r proton right please see here we are in the given example we are not using the radius in fact we have to use the degree of curvature and what is the rule the degree of curvature is always remember degree of curvature always inversely proportional to radius of curvature more radius of curvature lesser degree of curvature right more degree of curvature means lesser radius of curvature in the given examples make sure whether you are comparing radius of curvature or degree of curvature now in the given example which is the more radius you will find the degree of curvature is less for one degree of curvature less for one and degree of curvature is more for track two right so whichever has more radius that is what less the degree of curvature now in this example r alpha greater than alpha p make use of this condition now track one track one represents alpha beam alpha beam and track 2 represents the proton beam hope you got the answer make sure degree of curvature is inversely proportional to radius of curvature that is what is the principle that we have used here when you are comparing the radius also make sure whether you are given velocity as a data or momentum as a data or kinetic energy of the particle as a data then only we can use the right expression now let me do one more example based on the fundamental definition yesterday we have told charge in particle magnetic field moving charges experience force given by we have given it in this vector form f bar equal to q times v bar cross b bar order is also very important we told f equal to q v b sin theta the magnitude direction yes of course left hand rule now in the given example it is said as proton of mass 2 mev million electron volts the unit of energy electron volt proton of energy 2 mev projected into a magnetic field of 2.5 tesla at right angles it is given now the a question is find the force or find the acceleration on this proton of the given particle 
Now our definition is that F equal to QVB sin theta. Use all your data. In the given example, sin theta is 1. Therefore, this I am writing it as QVB. But velocity is not given. We are given the energy which is the kinetic energy. Therefore, half mv square. Half mv square, the kinetic energy. Half mv square is equal to k implies v is equal to under root 2k by m which is our substitution. So f is equal to charge of the proton equal to that of electron 1.6 into 10 minus minus 19. Therefore this is charge E. V means root of 2k by m times b. Now it is the time for substitution and most important thing is using all right SI units. See what is that uh, electron charge 1.6 into, I just give you the numbers, you please make sure the calculation. E is 1.6 into 10 rise minus 19 coulomb. Now what is kinetic energy going to be? Kinetic energy given to be 2 MeV. That electron unit is not the SI unit and we need the SI unit as job. Right. What is that? Young EV, young for million electron volt, the million refers to 10 rise 6. Therefore, it is 2 million means 10 rise 6. So, whenever electron volt is given, we will convert that into the joule. The conversion factor is yes, 1.6 into 10 rise minus 19. And what is the mass of the proton? See, in this case, in this case, generally mass of the proton is supposed to be known by the student. Therefore, sometimes mass of the proton may not be in the data. We have to use that. And 1.6 into 10 rise minus 27 kg. And of course, B is given to be 2.5 Tesla. No subparticles here. 2.5 Tesla only. Now the point is the calculation. And as I have told you, when you are doing the calculation, the most important thing will be the order. What order you get is very important. Options will definitely help you. Now inside the, see this is, you have 10 rise, 10 rise minus 19 order is there. 10 rise minus 19 order is there. And inside this uh, square root, yes, you have 10 rise 27. 10 rise 27 and this is 33. So 10 rise 33 m coming to the numerator side. This minus 27 becomes plus 27 and all you have 10 rise. So this is 33 and then this is 10 rise minus 19. Right? 10 rise minus 19. So 33 and 19. Yes, we will get it as 14 order. 10 rise 14 order. 10 rise 14 order. So this is 10 rise into under root 10 rise minus 14 which will be 10 rise minus 7. So 10 rise plus 7. So final order you are getting as 10 rise minus 12 Newton. So that order will definitely help you in the options. Right? Most of the neat and CD examples, options very 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 important we should be able to estimate the answer that will be our uh, uh, time management technique see the charged particles placed in electric field charged particles placed in magnetic field so these are comparative examples are a bit popular for our CT and needs and that is why I would like to give you a simple tabla column for the answers of such comparison comparative questions we can use this tabla column just let me show the tabla column I am taking Electron, proton, deuteron, and alpha particle. Because these are regularly given particles. Now, what is the charge? And what is the mass? And what is specific charge Q by M? Remember, I am not writing the magnitudes. I am giving only a table for the comparison. We are comparing the masses, we are comparing the charges, and also the specific charges. Now charge of the electron, I write minus 1, 1 unit of charge with negative sign, whereas proton also 1 unit of charge with the positive sign, neutron also 1 unit of positive charge and that of alpha is positive charge of 2 units. Here 1 unit is nothing but 
the charge of the electron 1.6 into 10 raise minus 19 not numbers for comparison sake I am writing now here if I am writing this for um, masses also supposing if I consider mass of the proton as 1 unit then for that of deuteron that deuteron will be of 2 units and alpha particle will be of 4 units and that of electron will be 1 by 1840 or 1836 I have taken a near value round edge 1 by 1840 is what is the mass of the electron when compared to mass of the proton therefore now the last column you see the specific charge I am taking specific charge it will be yes 1840 this will be q by m1 and, and this is 1 by 2 and this is 1 by 2 so what is that we observe in the entire tabular column because as I have told you charged particles placed in electric field placed in magnetic field comparative strength and now here what we find is that charge is same for electron proton and neutron and the charge is maximum for alpha this is what we found then when it comes to mass what is that we observe mass is alpha particle is massive you can see four units of mass we have there whereas least mass is for the of electron right and when it comes to specific charge when it comes to specific charge what do we observe specific charge maximum for electron minimum for alpha particle and neutron minimum and also same it is 1 by 2 1 by 2 and that of the proton is 1 so it is charge of I mean specific charge of proton is greater than that of alpha particle so these are our states you remember this tabular column you write this tabular column so that all compact examples I will make use for a quicker solution now let us take up one example one or two examples in all these examples I, I, I wish you use this tabular column for quick answers now the question is that alpha beam projected normally into a magnetic field with some energy k revolves with a frequency of 3 mega hertz find the frequency of revolution of a proton beam projected with the energy of 3k 3 times because k is that of alpha particle the energy of the proton beam is 3k in the same magnetic field at right angles so what is the frequency for this proton beam I have told you not to remember too many questions too many formulae I have told you R is equal to mv by bq this uh, v by R is what is omega term which you will get it as v q by m this omega angular frequency 2 pi f right so what is that uh, our take from this frequency proportional to q by m right frequency of revolution proportional to specific charge and just now i have shown the comparative tabular column for first given to be alpha alpha the specific charge we have taken as 1 by 2 and for proton the specific charge was 1 so what is that we have the specific charge of proton is double that of alpha particle so using this our answer would be since frequency proportional to q by n and the specific charge of proton is double that of the alpha particle frequency of proton is 2 times the frequency of alpha particle so if it is 3 mega h so for that it will be like 6 mega h remember the solution i have used that tabular column right next example next example also i would like to show a kind of same comparative study and also making use of our fundamental expression and having a small change proton beam energy is now given as 3 kev projected into a magnetic field at right angles circle of radius r describing circle of radius r now supposing alpha beam of energy 1 kev same field what will be the radius of alpha beam is the question alpha beam is the question now the data says radius versus energy yesterday we have told r is equal to mv upon bq this is nothing but mv is momentum by bq and momentum also we have written as remember 2 km by the famous relation k 
k equal to p squared by 2m p equal to root of 2 km m for mass of the particle k for kinetic energy right now this relation this relation will now use for our data now this is that r1 by r2 is equal to r1 by r2 is equal to right first k is under root therefore i am writing as root of k1 by k2 because r and k directly proportional k under root next mass mass is also under root therefore i write it as m1 by m2 and now here you see the charge in the denominator no square root and it is inverse relation therefore it will be like q2 by q1 now let this one refer one refer first given proton and two refers to that of alpha particle therefore you substitute now the values given first proton radius r for alpha particle we need to find r2 is equal to or simple substitution what is k1 k1 given to be 3 k2 given to be 1 and mass of the proton mass of the alpha particle comparative is just now have shown mass of the proton if you take it as 1 that of alpha will be 4 units the charge also q2 here 2 for alpha particle therefore this is 2 by charge of the proton is taken to be 1 unit right therefore now this answer is r2 is equal to r2 is equal to this 4 under root and this 2 gets cancelled right so r2 is equal to r upon root 3 is the answer see again the given the fundamental expression is changed into the given kind of parameters and then the second one is writing the ratios substituting the given values right i think you can now see the importance of that table every time i cannot go on doing that that is why just given as a table column now let us see one more example this example this example what do you see and even see in the previous example in the previous example remember remember frequency is independent of energy again is given as the kinetic energy k kinetic energy 3k but look at the final expression even yesterday also we have mentioned <coughs> frequency of revolution independent of any energy or velocity term depends only on the nature of the particle now same is now here given to be a question now look at this question proton deuteron proton deuteron and three particles are given proton deuteron and alpha particle projected into same magnetic field same magnetic field normally after passing through same electric field so what is the data proton deuteron and alpha particle projected into the same magnetic field normally after yes passing through same electric field same electric field radius of the deuteron is 5 cm find the data of proton and the data of alpha particle is the question now where again we start with same our fundamental expression mv by b cube which we got it as remember it is root of 2 km by b cube k for kinetic energy now in the given example it says that proton deuteron and alpha particle they are accelerated through same electric field after that they are entering into the magnetic field therefore this k the kinetic energy acquired by the charged particle due to potential difference remember a very very popular expression in electrostatics k is equal to v q v the potential difference q is the charge substitute so our final expression is root of 2 k means v q right m and under root it will be b square q square because i am writing everything into square root therefore this q yes this is our final expression now in the given example he says all of them are uh, accelerated through same electric field and then entering into same magnetic field as well 
Therefore, here the given example, this V for potential difference, B for magnetic induction, same for all the three. Therefore, our result is R proportional to under root M by Q. Now, I am writing the ratios for proton, for neutron and for alpha particle. Remember what was that numbers that we have given as a tabular column? For proton mass is 1 unit, charge is 1 unit. For deuteron mass is 2 units, charge is 1 unit. For alpha particle mass is 4 units, charge is 2 units. So what is this one? This one is... You write all roots. Okay. This is 4 by 2. So the ratio is 1 is 2. Yes. Root 2 is 2 root 2 1 is 2 root 2 is 2 root 2 root of m by q r proportional to under root m by q i have given the ratio c for proton mass versus mass and charge for deuteron mass and charge and for alpha particle mass and charge 1 is 2 root 2 is 2 root 2 so now in the given example that of deuteron is given that means root 2 x is equal to r root 2 x is equal to r so x is equal to r by root 2 why I am taking that you want me to tell you that supposing if this is what is the x this is root 2 x and this one is also root 2 x so this one shows that the radius of deuteron and radius of alpha particle yes they are one and the same because root 2 times root 2 times therefore in a given question for alpha particle also the radius of uh, circle described is 5 cm now for the proton now what is that uh, root 2 x is equal to 5 therefore x is equal to 5 by root 2 cm so for now the proton the answer is 5 by root 2 cm and for alpha particle it is same as 5 cm hope you got it that is comparative examples make use of the tabular column this example for another good concept first let us read the question it says beam of charged particle projected into space containing b bar the magnetic induction vector is given as 4 j it is given in terms of vector right 4 j milli tesla and the electric field e is equal to suppose i said 1 2 0 volt per centimeter and it is i cap. Be very careful about the data, the units 120 volt per centimeter and it is going to be i cap. If it goes undeviated, that is what is the question. Goes undeviated in that space, find the velocity, velocity of that beam of charge is the question. Now here this is what is uh, the combined effect of electric field and magnetic field which we popularly call it as Lorentz force right. what is that? Lorentz force we have the electric field therefore F due to electric field is yes we write it as EQ charge times Q and we will know how to write this vector because positive charge always in the direction of field negative charge opposite to the field so that will come here now, what about the magnetic force? Magnetic force is equal to Q into V bar cross B bar. Right? Now, we are writing the combined effect. The combined effect of both electric and magnetic field, that is what is taken to be the net force, the Lorentz force. So, this net force is F E bar plus F B bar. So this is the vector addition, remember. Therefore, what we take is this is what is E bar Q plus Q times V bar cross B bar. So this is our Lorentz force taking Q as power term E bar plus V bar cross B bar. Order is important, please do remember. So this is what is the Lorentz force. Now in the given example, it is said that the beam goes undeviated. What is the meaning of going undeviated? What are the different possibilities? Now we will discuss that. Now, 
According to the data, magnetic field is along positive y-axis and electric field is along positive x-axis. So it is mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic fields. In such case, do remember, a beam of charge going in a space containing perpendicular electric and magnetic fields, the condition for undeviation or condition for no deflection would be yes. V bar, the velocity vector of the beam should be perpendicular to V bar and it should be perpendicular to E bar. So I am now writing the condition as yes, V bar perpendicular to V bar perpendicular to E bar. That is, they are all mutually perpendicular, sorry, perpendicular to one another. Any two vectors are perpendicular to each other and all the three are perpendicular to one another. Therefore, if it is along positive y-axis and it is along positive x-axis, V should be along z-axis. And that z-axis, whether it is positive z-axis or negative z-axis, yes, we have to make use of this rule of cross product. I hope you know you are all ready with this cross product rule A bar cross B bar, I cross J, J cross K, K cross I. Please use that. Any of your doubt, you can call me, you can speak to me. Now I'm ready. Now for going undeviated, the force due to the magnetic field is equal to force due to electric field condition. If the two forces are equal and opposite, yes, net force is zero and no question of deflection. Therefore, I am now writing QVB because we said perpendicular to one and any two vectors. Therefore, it is QVB sin 90 is equal to capital E into Q. The electric force which will show you that V is equal to E upon B. The velocity selector properly called. Space containing electric field and magnetic field at right angles. The required velocity for undeviated uh, E is undeviated B means V is equal to E by B. I have given that in the vector form. Supposing if V is also written in the vector form, then this V is equal to yes E bar cross B bar the magnitude by B square. E bar cross B bar by B square. This is E into B sin theta happens to be 1 and it is B square, right? So that is how you will get it as E by B. So this is a popular topic of uh, undeviated beam of charge in a combined electric and magnetic field. Now the time for substitution of our given answer. For this question we have shown a solution where we have shown three different questions the same can be looked at. First it is V is equal to E by D condition and the same we are writing it in the vector form also and even before that this expression of Euler force. Now time for substitution. Now V is equal to E by B. How much is how much is E? See, e is he said 120 volt per centimeter. Volt per centimeter, we have to convert that into volt per meter. Per centimeter converted into, yes, per meter. Centimeter is 10 power minus 2. It is per centimeter, therefore it is 120 into 10 square volt per meter. B value given to B, again there is a multiple C, 4 J is milli Tesla, so it is 4 into 10 rise minus 3 Tesla and therefore V is equal to 120 into 10 square by 4 into 10 rise minus 3. So that is what is our answer. So this is uh, 30 into 10 rise 5, 3 into 10 rise 6 meter per second. This is 3 into 10 rise 4 centimeter per second. Always when we are using the numericals, options are very important. Number along with uh, the right unit is very very important. So that was our question of uh, Lorentz force. Now let us come to one more example.
And this example is also a very, 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 very popular topic for our agency. It is the concept of our cyclotron. Remember, cyclotron is a device used to accelerate positive charges to very, very high velocities. Now, this cyclotron, we use a principle. In fact, what is the principle? It is the Lorentz force. That is, we apply both electric and magnetic fields. And that uh, electric and magnetic fields will be at right angles. And again, the same condition that we told earlier. So, in the cyclotron, I am writing one after the other some important results. Each of the results is an important question for you. Or it's a solution for neat or CT question. Number one. The first one in the cyclotron is this condition V bar perpendicular to B bar perpendicular to E bar is one condition. And I am not getting into those the descriptions and all because you know it is made up of two D's with a very very snap separation between them. Right? D's, identical D's. Hmm? You remember all that. And now we apply both electric fields and magnetic field. Now when it comes to the question of applying electric field. The electric field that is applied between the D's is a very special one, like right? it is an alternating electric field. Alternating electric field whose direction reverses at regular intervals of time. And that is why both the D's are connected to what is called as an oscillator. Now what, would, what should be the frequency of the oscillator is one of the questions for our exams. Remember, first condition, the second condition is that frequency of oscillator remember oscillator I am using frequency of the oscillator should be two times frequency of revolution of the particle this is the first condition you need to remember if f is the frequency of revolution of the particle in the magnetic field then it is two times and we know that frequency term is independent of energy and then the size of the beam, but size of the circle described by the beam gradually increases, also energy increases, but frequency remains the same. I repeat my statement, in the cyclotron, gradually radius of the circle described by the beam increases, kinetic energy also increases, but frequency remains the same. And if the frequency is F, oscillator frequency should be double. And in such case, we have already given the expression for revolution. Two times, what is the frequency? Yes, it is dq by 2 pi m. Therefore, the required frequency is bq by pi m. This is one, one expression. So, this is a one of a solution for our questions in NEET and CET. Next one, what should be the radius of the d's? That is size of the disk, what size should be taken, that size depends upon the energy requirement. So what is the energy of the uh, beam that finally we need is what is important. For that our solution is one more time. See already we have an expression for radius. Radius of the circular path is we have started with mv by bq and in the, even in the recent two or three examples we have used this is under root 2km by BQ is what is our base. Therefore, now kinetic energy K is equal to yes, B square Q square by M times R square right? B square Q square by M times R square. Here again, one more expression very popular for our exams questions and also find k proportional to r square for a given beam for a given field. Again you can write different ratios here you can find the answers for different questions. So k is equal to so what should be the radius? So the radius of the d is equal to I'm writing the radius of the d is equal to under root kn by bq is the question. So this is the required radius for the required energy and this is the frequency of oscillator. Frequency of oscillator. Remember all the concepts that we have discussed now, every, every result is a solution for our neat and CD question. Now 
I have a small question based on this cyclotron. Remember, cyclotron device used to accelerate only positive charged particles. Now, let us come to our example. Example says cyclotron to accelerate a proton beam. Proton beam uh, and cyclotron is made up of Bs of radius capital R and connected to an oscillator of frequency F. Now the data in the question is radius of the Bs and frequency of oscillator. Now the question is find the magnetic induction used in the device and also find the maximum kinetic energy of the beam that we attain is the question. Now just we have used those expressions one more time. What is the frequency of oscillator? Frequency of the oscillator is 2 times yes bq by 2 pi m. Now here it is going to be that of proton and use the charge of the proton as E. Therefore F given to be oscillator is 2 times B E by 2 pi m. Right? Now we have to find an expression for B also. For that make use of this kinetic energy or uh, the radius expression. Earlier we told earlier we told R is equal to yes root of K M by B Q K M by B Q was the radius expression. Therefore from this you will have B is equal to root of K M by R root of K M by R so now you have two equations and two unknowns K and B they are what are asking for right so now two equations will start to get your answer so cyclotron a popular case to be remembered expressions for frequency terms and size of the these two expressions one for frequency as well for radius you now from this what you can write is capital B the induction which is asked for B is equal to 2 yes 2 pi m f upon yes 2 e 2 pi m f upon 2 e is the answer of course pi m f by e is the required induction strength and now we will substitute here and what we require is k k is equal to Yes, B squared, Q squared, R squared by 2M. Yes, please let us substitute this value of B here. So if it is pi square, M square, F square, E square, of course, capital R is given upon 2M. Upon 2M. So final answer, pi square, F square, E square, M, R square, M by 2 the kinetic energy right so kinetic energy and magnetic connection cyclotron is a very important topic so do remember this example we have discussed in detail